So I haven't done much videoing at all with my Spitfire. It doesn't get as much love as the TR3 or the uh, or the TR6. This is the original paint of the car. I bought it about 10 years ago. I... My daughter asked me to buy it because it was uh, like my first car, which was a 64 Mark I that you see there, and uh, and she wanted to get another one to work on. So uh, I got another one, and, and uh, this is the one I got. Uh, paid $800 for it on Craigslist. Got it out. Uh, it's in a different location than the, than the TR3 and the TR6. I don't have the nice, beautiful shop here that I do, um, but I just do an overview. Uh, you might notice it's got me out of seats. Uh, I put wire wheels on it. It's a 69, working my way through. The door still needs some work. It was crunched in by the previous owner. Um, but again, that's original paint. Let me uh, pick up the hood and we'll see what's inside. I gotta do this one-handed this way. So it's got a uh, it's got a 1296 small journal engine. It is, uh, I've done an alternator uh, install, uh, reduction uh, gear reduction motor. I've uh, I've gone through and I've done the uh, done the firewall quite a quite a while ago. What's interesting about this and why I'm doing this video has to do with these guys. These are HS4 SU carbs and. Uh, the needle for these is a mystery. We'll get into that later. And if you look back in there, you can see there's an O2 sensor on there. That's the air fuel ratio gauge we're going to talk about today. So uh, this channel is about things that uh, that I've done that are not in the manual. And what's not in the manual is how to install an air fuel ratio gauge in your car which I've done I'm in the middle of doing here uh, you also see I have an overdrive transmission in it and we're going to talk about that we're going to talk about how to hook it up to a data logger as well um, if you uh, like this and uh, want, encourages me uh, to do uh, more of these videos if you like it subscribe to it uh, anyway let's get into it and uh, again there's the beautiful ocean out there to look at in choosing my air fuel ratio gauge, I went to Speed Hut for a variety of reasons. Uh, one of the, a couple of criteria I had is I wanted it to be a wide band uh, gauge, meaning it would go from 8.5 to 18 rather than very, be very narrow around uh, 14 uh, for reasons that we'll see later. I wanted to have analog out so I could uh, include it in a data logger solution that I'm, uh, that I'm building. And uh, I also wanted it to be two, two and a sixteenth inch. In other words, I wanted it to um, to look like my other gauges. And you can see this one doesn't look like my other gauges, but you can hit the Customize Now button, and it takes you to a screen like this. And it allowed me to customize it uh, like this. And for mine, I also entered in uh, Smith's here and uh, and got it to say Smith's on it. And I, I messed with the text. So anyway, so it looks like my other gauges somewhat. Um, and, and so on. So I was happy with the way this turned out and, uh, and the support from SpeedHut has been good. If you want to see what it looks like to customize it elsewise, you can, uh, let's uh, apply a gauge here, and you can change the, uh, for example, the color. You can change the color to a different color like that. Let's put it back. Um, if you want to see my, my choices in uh, in uh, my choices, it was uh, black dial, white font, um, night. I had actually white, numbers glow white, cent century font, standard tick style. Uh, I put the Smith's logo in. Uh, we can uh, add that in. Um, uh, I, I forgot to do it here. Uh, pointer style, we had the, I, I chose this. Uh, pointer style here. I don't know why it um, did that to me. Let's cancel that. Um, bezel was Revolution Black. 
no disc, and no note. So that that with the Smiths applied that we saw earlier is what I've got. And the night view uh, will look like this. If you change it to white, it'll look like the colors will look like uh, colors will look like this. So that's what my uh, actual gauge looks like, and you'll notice I will do another video on exhaust gas temperature. But again, uh, that's what it looks like, and I think it's a pretty good match for the other uh, gauges. So I have two sets of installation instructions from Speed Hut. Uh, the first one says disconnect the negative battery cable, mount the gauge in the desired location using the split lock ring to mount to the dash panel. Um, connect the wiring harness, install the O2 sensor, uh, connect the wires as harness is shown in figures one and two. Um, notice power needs to be hooked up to a switch source, not common with the other accessories, and reconnect the battery cable. Now, now um, you'll notice when I show you, I, uh, I installed an accessory uh, fuse box on switched power, um, partly for this gauge, uh, and so on. So uh, mounting the O2 sensor. Okay, so the first, disconnect the battery, mount the gauge, mount the sensor. So um, let's talk about um, mounting the gauge for a minute. So, so I chose to mount mine in the, uh, in the center uh, support bracket. And you notice there's, a, there's an interior, um, inter interior face plate here that is mounted through. And then if you look at the back, there is an exterior face plate. The only thing that holds those together and sandwiches it together are these rings on the gauges. I didn't. I, I drilled some holes back there to, uh, to, to to connect them together, but I realized that the rings on the faceplate would be enough uh, to squeeze this together. So that's how I did it. Um, it came out rather well. Um, and then uh, I'll talk about the wiring in a bit. So here are the here's the template I made for that. Here's the front piece. And here's the back piece, and uh, and this is uh, this is to scale. So if you uh, want to count the uh, count the blocks, you can see uh, exactly how uh, that was made. Now mounting the O2 sensor, uh, this is is important. It shows Figure Two shows a range of acceptable O2 um, mounting positions. A vertical position can get too hot in confined spaces. A horizontal can cause condensation to drip onto the sensor. It's recommended the sensor be installed between 15 degrees from the vertical and 10 degrees from the horizontal. Uh, in all cases, the sensor should be perpendicular to the gas flow. The bunk should sit squarely over the pipe. Um, this ensures an adequate but uh, not excessive amount of gas enters the sensor. And here's figure, um, figure two. It shows the accepting acceptable mounting angle on the uh, on the exhaust pipe in the other set of instructions that i that i have in talking about mounting the o um, two sensor it says the same basic information but it also adds it is recommended to install the o2 sensor no farther than one meter 40 inches from the closest exhaust valve and i measured mine with a tape and ran it ran, ran it down the uh, down the header i called uh, bosch support because this is a bosch the LSU 4.9 is a Bosch sensor. I called them and said, hey, is there a minimum distance you can set it? Because I thought, well, maybe I could put two of them in and put one in each, uh, each side of my 421 exhaust so I could have one for each side of the, uh, each bank of, of cylinders. And uh, the, um, the, the folks at Bosch Technical Support told me that you don't want it too close either because you want enough time for those pulses to gather together and mix the mix it together to get it mix the gas um, together to get an accurate um, count and if you have it too close and it's pulsing uh, it'll throw the sensor off uh, and I forget the minimum distance it was something like 31 distant inches or something like that uh, you can call them and find out so I put mine greater than 30 and less than 40 uh, on my on my exhaust pipe so uh, there's the O2 sensor, and you can see it's a pretty tight fit between the between the frame and the and the body. Um, to tighten it in there, I had to use a uh, a seven eighths crow's foot wrench attachment. Uh, when I set the original angle 
I mounted everything in here uh, and I put a, a, a hose clamp down on there and I bent another piece of metal up and I got it positioned just where I wanted it and hose clamped it down and then I took it in to get it to, to get the bung welded so I knew it would fit right exactly where I wanted it. So uh, there's the O2 sensor and, uh, and I ran the, the wire goes uh, up along the top, it goes out the back and then it comes back up through the firewall uh, with the main wiring harness. So here's the wiring diagram. You see that there's a, a requirement for a uh, 12 volt keyed ignition for red, a, um, a gauge ground black, a 12 volts for dash lighting white, that's the pointer, uh, a sensor ground, and the sensor ground there's a note on it that it's important that that, that that be a good ground and to take it to the frame and we'll talk about that when we get there. Analog out, that's for a data logger, and a throttle position, that wasn't on mine, there was no throttle position wire, and then the main, uh, main, main wire for the sensor that we saw in the previous video. Um, we also see that there's an inverter here um, to, in order to um, flip the voltage uh, to the dash light for the dial lighting uh, white to black. Now, I'm installing two gauges at once. I'm doing the um, uh, an exhaust gas temperature and an air fuel rate ratio gauge. And so you see I took a minute and figured figure out how I could uh, how I could save a little bit and also how I could put connectors in. So I put connectors uh, in between here so I could remove I, I could I could disconnect all the gauges and pull that panel out of there without having to um, mess with uh, having to go all the way down to the, where, where the uh, where the wire connected and each of these gauges each of these connectors has a high quality shielded connection so it doesn't um, ground um, let's see um, the only thing that we should note here is that I have not hooked up the, the lights yet. So let's go take a look actually at the uh, at the wiring installation. Was to have it easily disconnectable so that I can uh, so, so that I can take this uh, bracket out if I want to. So here's our air fuel ratio gauge and uh, and uh, here is our exhaust gas temperature gauge. All these wires here are going to uh, are going to power and ground for the lighting. Here is our main wiring harness that goes back, and I showed you it goes and I routed it out the out the same um, exit out of the firewall as the uh, as the main wiring harness is. Um, here is our uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, here is our our data logger channel and I've got it going to a serial connector I haven't finished figured out where I'm going to mount that yet um, and notice one side of that goes to the uh, goes to the serial connector and then the other side although it's blue here it actually goes to a ground I want to talk about that ground for a minute that ground actually goes up and through the grommet for the uh, the grommet out here right here the same one as for the uh, the the this this grommet is the same one as for the the heater valve that's just the one I chose and I ran the wire to this grounding point right there I wanted a really good ground uh, one of the problems the gauges can have is grounding issues and so both my fuse box and my gauge is grounded right to here and that's also uh, so right to the frame and uh, and I have good confidence that that'll uh, that that won't be a problem with the gauge so power um, I ran power and I did a separate video on this it has to be to switch power and I ran the power to an accessory um, fuse box that I uh, that I installed, and I'll, and I'll post a link to that to the video on how I put this accessory fuse box in. So that's pretty much the wiring, uh, pretty straightforward. You probably saw these connectors and wondered what that is. That's a piggyback connector, and uh, 
and I show the part number and everything for that in the um, in the uh, video for the accessory fuse box. Uh, this also this connector is a custom connector that I uh, that I put in, uh, and I got this connector from uh, Santa Cruz Electronics. I just went down and found one, and uh, that looked look like it was a good one. I probably should have put the same kind of connector in here, but uh, but I didn't. I just used these. Now the purpose for doing all of this is uh, is these guys. These are the needles that go in the carburetor, and I've got a set of AAA rich rich needles from Spit Bits. I got some some stock ABT needles, and I've got an AAQ. And each of them, as we'll see in another video, um, have some advantages and disadvantages for their profile. But I don't have the right needle for that uh, for that carburetor, so uh, I'm going to take this. I, I'm making a, a needle height sensor. Um, this I have this one and another model I'm looking at. This will attach to uh, to to the the uh, uh, an arm that'll go up and down and and measure the needle height and it'll send it out to my Arduino data logger. Not only will I log the needle height, but I'll also log log the air fuel ratio, and I will uh, be able to read it on a uh, read it on an SD card. And analyze that to see to come back to say okay which needle do I need so I'm looking forward to getting all of that done in the in the near future so something I might do differently is uh, angle these gauges up a little bit and make them angle them so I can see them while I'm driving this part of the gauge is hard to read while I'm driving I shouldn't be reading it anyway and uh, that closely uh, the data logger will help with all that Anyway, this channel is about things I'm doing and learning that are not in the manual. Um, and uh, one of the things I'm learning already, and I'll show it in the later video, is that uh, I get a pause on acceleration. And I find, and I thought that it was leaning out that I need more damping. But it actually, the needle goes the other way and it goes too rich. So I learned something. I need a lighter oil to get rid of that hesitation. Anyway, um, this is, if you enjoyed this video, if you... Uh, um, have comments please uh, please make them tell me what you're doing um, please like and subscribe it. it encourages me to do other videos uh, like this it takes quite a bit of time to do it and seeing all your comments and and so on uh, encourages me to spend, spend the time to do it thanks a lot for watching um, stay tuned for another video on where we actually use the gauge and diagnose different needles